So today we'll be covering the topic user events. We'll be discussing about the need of user events. We'll be talking about what are user events and where to use them. We'll also be talking about how to use them and how to implement them. Now user events is a extension of the same event structure that you studied in the last webcast. So I'll just spend a minute to tell you about what is an event structure. So an event structure essentially works like a case structure with built-in wait on notification function. The event structure can have multiple cases, each of which is a separate event handling routine. You can configure these cases to handle one or more events. And when the event structure executes, it will wait until one of the configured event has occurred and then will execute the corresponding case for that event. For example, if I have multiple buttons on my user interface, each button can be programmed to run a particular set of code whenever it is pressed. One of the very important design pattern which is generally used with event structures is producer consumer based on event design uh, based on events design pattern. I'll just open up an example in LabVIEW or rather the template in LabVIEW which is used or shows how do we use event structures in LabVIEW using the producer consumer design pattern. So over here, the top loop that you see is the producer loop and the bottom loop that you see is the con consumer loop. So in the producer loop, there is an event structure which has been configured to continuously monitor this NQ element button and whenever there is a change in value of this NQ element, it will NQ this string value via this NQ element function. Once done, the consumer loop will read the value and will process that data, that string element coming out from the DQ function and will process the data here. So essentially the producer keeps on producing data based on events and the consumer loop is there to act upon the events. But when we are using producer consumer event design pattern, there are some concerns. We can easily send messages from the producer to the consumer loop. That is this design pattern efficiently passes messages from the producer loop to the consumer loop. But what if the consumer loop needs to send a message to the producer loop? For example, if an error occurs in the consumer loop, you might need to send a message to the producer loop about the error. Also, you might want to use the event handling mechanism that is built into the producer loop to modify the behavior of the program at runtime from the consumer loop itself. So one way to accomplish this is to define a user event which can trigger an event in the producer loop event structure from anywhere in the application. And this is the solution that we are going to discuss today that is user events. User events are essentially events which are generated programmatically rather than being generated by the user interface. So there is no user interaction which happens here but rather the events are generated programmatically. The events generated using user events are registered and handled dynamic, dynamically unlike normal user interface based events which are handled statically. They can be used to trigger events which can have multiple handlers again just like a normal event structure. And along with the event notification they can also carry, carry data. So therefore you can say we are having an event handler also I am having a mechanism to send some kind of data when I am triggering this event.
So let's discuss about how do we work with user events. Just following the basic architecture of LabVIEW programming, user events are also configured in the same way. I'll be creating, using and destroying. So the first step is create and register a user event. For doing this, I use the create user event VI. And I use the register events node to register a particular event which I have created. And then I use the event structure to use these events which we have generated. Next is generating the user event itself. So we have already created a resource which will be used for generating user events and can be generated using this VI which is known as the generate user event VI. Next once we are done with the user event generation and its usage, we'll be going ahead with the unregister of the user event. Once we have unregistered the user event, we'll be going ahead and destroying the user event so that we are not occupying any resources after we are completed with the VI. Let's just go much into deeper and understand how do we use these things. So, here is an example of creating and registering user events, which was the first step in the last slide. So to define the user event, we'll be using this create user event function and we'll be wiring a terminal or a constant to this user event to define the data type which this event will carry. The label of the object which I put here will also become the label of the event which is going to be handled. Also the data type here will give me the data out in the data node inside the event structure. Once I have done with the creating the user event, next I have to register for event. So the user event out output of the create user input function is a strictly typed refnum that carries the name and the data type of the user event. We wire the user event out output of the create user event function to an event source input of the register for events function, which is over here. Now, as I told you earlier, you cannot register for a user event statically. We need to handle a user event in the same way we handle a dynamically registered user interface event. So we wire the event registration refnum out from this registration for events function to the dynamic event terminal on this, ter on this left hand side of our event structure. Now we use the edit events dialog box to configure a case in the event structure to handle this particular event. The name of a user event appears under the dynamic subheading unlike the other objects which occur under controls or pane. So over here if you see this event sources you can see dynamic. Under dynamic there is user event option and you can attach this user event to the object that you declared at the time of creating the user event. You can even wire a combination of user events and user interface events to register for events function by expanding the node. Next is generating the user event. So this function is the function which actually triggers the event. So we have already created the resource for the event. That is I have an event structure which will be configured or which will be triggered whenever an event is generated programmatically. And I also have given the data type to that event, uh, to that event's initialization so that we can use the events, the user events to even send some data asynchronously. So the generate user event function looks like this. I wire in the user event uh, uh, refnum to this function and I also give the event data over here. So whenever this VI will execute, it will ask the event structure to execute the particular case which has been configured for the user event. And also 
in the data node of the event structure, the data that I'm passing through the generate user event will be present. Next is unregistering user events. So you have to unregister a user event whenever you are no longer in a need to use them. In addition of unregistering the event, you should also destroy the user event by wiring the user event refnum to the user event input of the destroy user event function that is displayed here. Wire the error output cluster of unregister for events function to the error in of the destroy user event function to ensure that the functions execute in the correct order. As they are operating on different inputs, you need to make sure that they have a dependency on each other by wiring an error out cluster or by certain other data flow mechanism. LabVIEW unregisters all events and destroys all existing user events automatically whenever the top level VI finishes running. However, NI recommends that you unregister and destroy user events explicitly, especially in a long running application to conserve memory resources. So just to understand it all, what can we do with the user event? We can use user event to programmatically create and name our own events, we can, which are called user events, to carry user defined data. Now like queues and notifiers, user events allow different parts of an application to communicate asynchronously, which is actually the need for using the user events. You can handle both user interface programmatically generated user events in the same structure. That is, you do not need to create different event structure for registering or for triggering cases based on user events. You can handle various events generated from user events as well as based on user interface in the same event structure. Here's the modification of the producer consumer design pattern based on events when we are using them with user events. So if you see over here we are using almost all the things that we covered today. We are having the create user event function first of all with the type data type wired in. We are having the register for events function. We are having the event case structure which will be handling these events dynamically. We also have the generate user event function that will be generating or triggering the event. At the end we have unregister for events and destroy user event functions wired in together by, with the error cluster so as to make sure that they occur in a particular sequence so that we unregister first and then we destroy the user event which will relieve all the resources. So if you see the first step is creating and registering user events. I have given the data type as an error cluster. So therefore this event can be used to pass data which will be of the data type of error. An error data type consists of three things which are status, code and source. And hence if you see in this example or in this design pattern, if there is a error which, being, which will be generated in the consumer loop, it will be directly given to the producer loop so that the producer loop can handle the error and can act accordingly. So this is the generate user event function to which we wire in the data which is nothing but the error out coming out of the DQ element and then our processing. So that if there is some error which happens while DQing the element or somewhere else in our code, we can generate a user event which will then trigger the event structure in the producer loop. If you see here in the data node, you can see status, code and source. These are essentially the information that will be passed from the generate user event function 
to the user event event structure handler. So essentially if you wire in a data type as cluster to create user event when you are initializing all the elements of the cluster will come here in the notify node and then you can handle the error based on the user event. Once I'm done with the user event you can see how after an error the user event will make the consumer loop to stop and also if you see the producer loop will also be st stopped as the status becomes true and it is given to the conditional terminal of the producer loop. So if there is an error in the consumer loop this particular example or this particular VI will stop its execution there and then. After that we will be doing unregister for events and destroy user events for conserving the memory resources. I'll just go ahead and show you a example. So in this example what I've done is that I've programmed it in such a way that whenever this fire event button is pressed this LED should flash. So I'll just run the program and show it to you once. So if you see whenever I am clicking on this button obviously there is an event case which is handling this particular event and is flashing this LED accordingly. If you also see below there is a countdown that is going down and whenever it goes down to zero the LED will flash automatically without my pressing the fire event button. So essentially what has been done is that the same event structure which was supposed to flash this LED which was acting only when the fire event button was pressed is now also programmatically doing the same thing or programmatically generating the same event because there has been a user event configured inside another loop which is doing a programmatic countdown. I'll just show the code to you so that you will have a better understanding. If you see here, just like in a normal scenario I told you, I have created and registered for a user event with a data type of boolean. Then I have given this user event out to the generate user event here. Now if you see this generate user event has been programmed in such a way that it won't generate any user event until this countdown is met. Once this countdown is met the user event will generate a user event and it will pass the value true to the event structure. Over here with this fire event structure, fire event event being handled, it is currently handling only wherever this button is being pressed. But also there is one more also there is a dynamically linked structure which has been wired here which means that this generate user event function is also capable of generating the event. So whenever this generate user event changes its value we will have this boolean LED being flashed. Once we are done with the use of user event later we will do unregister for events and then after doing unregister we will be going ahead and destroying the user event. To summarize it all, you can use user events to generate programmatic events and handle them dynamically so that you can 
have asynchronous notification for events as well as passing of data between various loops as a part of your application. So this is for the webcast for today. The contest for this week is now live on labviewenable.in. You can extend your webcast Wednesday learning experience of on labview enabled, the NI India online community. Labview enabled is the NI India community which is a single network of students, industry professionals and academicians collaborating and coming together to create discussions, exchange and share resources, generate content on application, NI technologies as well as industry trends and other third party technologies. It serves to unite users not only from India but also across the world on collaborating on sim similar applications. Simply put, it's a social network for engineers, students and researchers. Apart from the live online interaction during the webcast, an extended discussion and a contest on the topic is being carried out and it is now live on LabVIEW enabled the NI India community. You can even watch the previous episodes of webcast Wednesday, get your queries from the sessions and LabVIEW resolved and participate in weekly contests to win up to 50% discounts on NI certification exams. If you attend 20 sessions, you will be winning a free CLAD attempt. The recording of this session will be uploaded 